afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master of propaganda. We're off here till one versus one on Crossroads. To the north it is Jimmy, fighting for the upper course of Germany, Deutschland, taking on the role here of the 107th Panther Brigade here with Elite Armoured, with the 221 Scout Car, Emergency Repairs, Panzer Commander, Heat shells and the Storm Tiger. That's in the south of this Inkahuna fighting for the King Country, the Commonwealth, the Guards Army, the Mobile Assault, Vanguard, and Tactical Support with Triple Infantry and Triple Infantry as well for Jimmy. And as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and press that bell button. Also, a big thanks to my patron supporters, without which this episode is certainly impossible. And of course, a big thanks to all those who have donated. And you too can support by donating a pledge on Patreon. Links in the description. Uh, wait, double fault to start here for Jimmy. Is he going hard for the Eastern Fuel Point? Which is an interesting sort of opening to go for us the Northern play here. Normally it'd go for the Western Cemetery opening there, but uh, in this case he's pushing for the Lumber Yard with Inkun, of course, more commonly as the Southern player going for it as well. It's obviously, uh, likely, I mean, that Jimmy is planning to go for a disruptive start here. So, A, securing the Eastern Fuel Point, but also trying to throw off Inkun's early game there, which is kind of what the other commanders, so to say, trick is for the Sturm Pionera. We, of course, have to see how that pans out for Jimmy here and. Germany. Sandbags up here. And we got a second squad moving westward. So I suppose that would be the backup in case the initial push it doesn't work out. You could arguably go for a Fultzgrund deer squad for that purpose as well. There you go. Section of five from the Fultzgrund deer. Car 90 case is the Lee Enfield. The rifles. More section moving up. The Sturm Pine is going to have to like either catch them off guard or he's going to have to back off here because two sections in this position is going to be much harder for him just close in on because the section is just quickly focusing on the Sturm Pine is and Jimmy basically backs off. So while well, he's getting a bit of fuel here, so he's slightly thrown off in Kuna's early game. I think it's also quite clear the gambit here in the end was not going to pay off and it's also going to back off. But even then, he is nonetheless still getting, you know, in Kuna out of his fuel there for a bit. So that's going to still work out somewhat for Jimmy. So not bad, but not quite amazing either. Got the third section in Westwards there for in Kuna, we got the check there with the platoon command pissed out for him. Probably some sappers out here to deal with the Huns. Or he could go for a sniper here versus Jimmy. Center point, which could collate on a mine there. The Schutzenmine. Third full squad there heading northwards for Jimmy. Pulling back here. Looks like he's planning for another person. He's hoping to bait out Jimmy here to grab the fuel point again. Then he launches the counter attack. All the way, Jimmy's having none of that. Moving up behind the car front, also going to try and, I guess, flank up here, threaten the retreat path of the section. Perhaps having can uh, force Inkuna to retreat sooner. He's moving up here again. I think what he did, he was basically just trying to beat out the Fultzmans here. In this case, again, Jimmy did not take the bait, and now he's just back to pushing back the Germans, who are, well, obviously now just one versus two. Definitely no troops nearby. But even then, he has managed to delay Inkuna's fuel and come for a bit. Truck out there. As soon as he can go, f gets that, he can go for the 2 2 1 scout cut. But he's probably going to use them to A, put pressure on his opponent, but also eventually, I imagine, set up to secure himself more resources. Fultz and them just a two men, down to one man. Ludwig makes run for it, leaving his uh, dead comrades behind in the grass. And the nice pretty flowers. My goodness, Lawrence, those are some nice pretty flowers, aren't they? We're here to shoot Germans, not study flowers. Oh. Well, I really misunderstood this whole war thing then. Truck about there. 2 to 1, almost done there for a Jimmy and Germany. There we go, like to punch a Spiewagen. Mines up here around his opponent's base, and there we go, got a snub out here for Inca Una. Seems to be a build he's experimenting with us of late. Triple section snub here versus the Oberkommando West. 2 to 1, of course, is going to throw a bit of a large wrench into that particular plant, and the 2 to 1 obviously is going to be reasonably solid for countering the sniper. Sniper opening up there, got one kill so far. Also, that a sap or anything like it's got to be one more rule to the 2 to 1, which is going to be reasonably good as an infantry with its MG there on top. It's right here, Jimmy's initial disruption, I think, has been in versus Inkuna, reasonably effective. We got the truck there standing about. Looks like he is going for the Mechanized Regiment, or he's just not paying attention, thus, he isn't setting up there for the Battle Group headquarters. But Mechanized Regiment certainly would make sense here for Jimmy. More mines for Jimmy as well. Very good. Troops heading eastwards there. Could hit the fuel point. He couldn't go straight for the car point. It's then try to disrupt here. Inkuna's resource more. And there we go. Mechanized regiment headquarters up there for Jimmy and Germany. Two to one wing west. We've got full of the sappers. And I'm opening up there. We've got two kills in the chat. Of course, sappers that prevent the two to one from diving straight after the sniper and killing him. 
one kill in the two to one section. Savage when we head up that course, all packed up. The now with two kills, going for the western points, uh, eastern points, and the fuel point as well. More mines up here from Jimmy. Very good there. They need to cancel, I think, that one. Otherwise, his opponent's going to spot it and just get mines, but it doesn't ruin the surprise. Anyways, there we go. Snubber there with two kills still. Three kills. Not cancel the mines. Or maybe he thought he'd finish them and just move the Shunpai too far ahead. Oh, he's sending the Shunpai. I think he's going to try and use them to flash out the Sappers. Which point is going to then try and dive in with the 2 to 1. But the Sappers remain in position, preventing the 2 to 1 from going in there. Close one there for Inkaluna. Of course, Inkaluna is most likely aware of it. Grab the car on here to connect these some fuel point here. Western one that's under threat here from Inkaluna. Moving up his troops there. Very good. Lots of action here. And we got the. AC prepared there. There'll probably be a Puma on the way here for Jimmy in response to a likely AC since, I mean, with the Mount Orbicon response, we're going for Mechanized Regiment Headquarters. That's also means more opponents going to expect it as well. So the meta game is already sort of shifting towards, you know, more preparation for that, meaning, you know, ACs are much more common. Again, by the way, less common. Which, of course, also means Pumas now become a lot more common in response to the ACs. So we'll have to see how long this keeps up. It's not being useful here, though. Three kills, probably going to be up to four kills very soon. As Heinz suddenly finds his head missing. So there you go, four kills on the sniper, folks, they need to be careful. Noting no Sturmgewehrs being added out there to his troops. 2 to 1, of course, could be upgraded to the 2 to 3, which was a command variant of the armored car. Little fun fact there. Additional fun fact there's also an uh, unofficial version of the 2 to 2. One armored car which actually mounted a light anti tank and a large anti tank rifle, depending on who you're asking, to sort of give it a bit more firepower. Little fun fact there. That was a more of an improvised version. I don't think it was sort of uh, officially supported, if you will. Stone Pontering West was there. 2 2 1 falling back here for repairs. Probably going to go for the Puma anytime soon. We got the AC Mark 3 out. There we go. 234 2. The Puma, which was really the only version of the 234 armor car that really had a name. Which I always find is a bit amusing considering it was pretty much like the least used version. Because only run in a small run before the German army went, yeah, no, we don't like this idea. Which basically boiled down to the fact it was they were the armored car crews would get too bold and start throwing them about like tanks. Which is how they used in the game anyways. Rather than use them for reconnaissance. So, little fun fact there. And so they basically just scrapped the 234-2 and moved on to the Dash 3 and Dash 4, which technically had bigger guns, but they weren't mounted in the turrets, so they had to be more cautious about them. They still provided fire support, which is kind of what the 50mm gun was supposed to do, but, you know, in a manner that made them, you know, less likely to just go and go, Yeah, you know, Helmut, I think we could take on that Panzer, yeah. Six kills on the sniper, Puma sitting out there. Another fun fact about the 234 armored car was, it actually had a second driver's seat here, Sort of position the back so the driver could quickly just switch between the front and reverse position. We had to quickly get the armored car out of that position. A trait it shared with Italian armored cars. So, a little fun fact there. Van Hunt going out in there, flushing out the Vickers. Puma lanes are great here in the AC. And of course, going to be a trick pit there for Inca Una to deal with the Puma. Vickers there being shot to bits and burnt and routed. Got mines there not finished. Also being spotted here by. Uh, Jamie Stone Pines needs to cancel that by way the Inca Uno is going to be 30 munitions doing absolutely nothing, in fact less than nothing, in particular when you could have saved the munitions from being wasted. So yeah, that was a bit awkward there for Inca Uno. Bit of a slip up. Not one of the worst ones, but you know, a bit awkward. 2 to 3 they're ready. Might be planning to set up here for extra resources, which of course is another side effect of the 2 to 3 in game. Trying to catch the sniper here. Inca Uno and the British Army of course are having none of that. Jerry nonsense. Troops being snuck and shot at by the Vickers machine gun bunker there. And these start, we got Stone Pass of the section, plus another section back up there. We got Stun Grenade up, very good. But let's the other section about, that's gonna be a problem. And there we go, we got Vanguard Operations, so we're up for raid operations. The Fort Logistics Slider, the big crew repairs, the Crocodile, and the Strafing Supportability. Put them there, push back. Six pounder gun ready here for Inca Una and the British Army. Bit of a standoff here in the west. MG for the following way there for Jimmy to help deal with Inca Una's infantry. Puma could do with some repairs and there you go. Securing the munitions point, interesting enough, would have figured he might go for a fuel point or a strategic point. So he can secure himself more fuel, but uh, he goes for the munitions point instead, which means he's going to get 22 munitions out at this point, rather than just the standard 11. 
But yeah, I mean, most players would typically either sit on the strategic point, again, on a fuel point. Taking that way, you get more fuel. So a bit of an interesting choice there, but Jamie, I'm not saying it's bad, obviously, but it is interesting. It does stand out. Obviously, the munitions point is very, very safe, which could also be a reason he's doing it. He figures, you know, I might as well just go for the very safe point, point and just get myself a lot more munitions. We shall see, perhaps, what it is Jamie has planned there with it. Okay, looks like. It could also be he decided he actually wanted it on the point. He was just a bit too close to the munitions. Also possibly actually wanted the strategic point. If he just moves to the slight bit, heads to the right, and then sets up again, we'll have uh, confirmed it. I mean, that was also another possibility then. It does look like. In fact, that's exactly what it was. So far, ring down to the building. May see Mark Free setting out. Grab an eastern point here to the fight. Can you just shatter down the building, which so far is bravely resisting the British artillery. But I man, you're not for much longer. But really, Incoon is having a rough start here versus Jimmy, or at least a rough development. And so far, Jimmy's been very consistently able to deny his opponent fuel. And of course, with the 2 to 3 point, even more fuel. Even if it's not a ton, it's still going to allow him to like, just get slightly further ahead here of Incoon all the time. And in particular, on a map like Crossroads, which already has more fuel points on average, meaning getting good map control, can just like further snowball it. That's actually really dangerous here for Inkaruna. And it's also one of the things that tend to get, I think, not top up. But with Crossroads, again, it just has more resource points. So again, good map control on this map can just quickly snowball out of control compared with other maps. Fox Wing West was there, and Baker's holding up. Lost the Puma there, it's going to hurt Jimmy, but of course, at this point, he's just going to go, you know what? I'm just going to tag out and push for a fast panzer because, A, I've been controlling the fuel much better, and of course I got the 223. So he's not going to bother with, you know, another Puma, which I think is the right choice. He could, but why go for Puma so we can go for something bigger? And a bit sturdy. Oh, well, we got here and Kuna taking up. Very good timing there. Not the slouch with that, as some players are. 223 there, just still gaining resources, sorting out logistics. Schwerer there, much left for setting up. Fulton's doing something eastwards. Sappers there with mines. Fulton's got Stuart Pioneer setting out there for Jamie. Close to turn those Stuart Pioneer. We're probably going to see the round here. On the car farm, able to cover the victory point. Using the back hitch of the Puna for cover. Of course, he just wants to salvage it for a bit of extra fuel. You're getting faster towards the Panzers. Section there, they're taking heavy damage from the assault rifles and the stone pioneers and the folks of could actually see a wipe here, I think. Versman, there you go. Got two, the two remaining members at the same time. Impressive. In a strange way. Panzer fires in the AC, snub the opening up. We got 13 kills, 22. Strange on mine there. Further folks is blowing up. Catching there to Jimmy. Rising in the face of British resistance. And the West Side moving up. He growing points there, though. Mines down here from Incuna. Of course, good job. They're laying down mines. Going to make it harder there for Jimmy to make any swift pushes. So. Two thumbs up there to Inca Una. Though he is right now really short on infantry. He's down to just one section. Plus the sappers. That is very low. Actually, it's two sections he's lost. And here, two Jimmy. But there he goes. Going to make up for that loss with the Fort Logistics Glider. The officer and probably some commanders down the road. More mines here from Inca Una. Just lots of mines. Fox are there falling back. Swooping about there with a the glider. Crashing about, and there you go. Gliders, ahoy hoy. Got the air landing officer. Soon to just become the assault officer, I think. Or just officer. Sending out there with his silent stand guns and his angry, angry commandos. Jimmy, of course, could consider an orbital squad with light machine guns. I think it's quite potent here versus Inkaluna. And of course, Inkaluna could consider chucking in some extra commandos here. Like another commander squad, I think, could put some surge pressure on Jimmy with his folks kind of deals, particularly with a good flank. That Bunham kind of in the Vickers. Lighting things on fire. Enemy causing trouble. Trying to take one of our points. Section right on the east is one prophet to the eastern fuel point. Thumbs up there to Jimmy. Puts on the fire there. 
Sapphire's commandos advancing here on the German positions. Sten guns silenced and non silenced. Opening up, they got a cannon from nearby, but that's not going to be very good. This is the infantry. Eastern points being seized. We got 441, this is 417. And go in Kona adding a second commando squad. Very good, very good. That's going to leave Jimmy in a slightly tighter position here. Since 101, the commandos have a really good chance as the Fugs gun it is. Obviously, with the 300 quarters, the commandos won't get very far. Commander squad number two almost done. Or number one, technically. Oh wait, that's a heavy assault team there in a sense. Five silent stun guns with quite a punch. Light gun bombs and of course five men. Plus access to smoke grenades down the road. And ambush. Really, they got a lot there. There you go, light gun bomb off. Now they technically there was just the gammon bomb. It wasn't like a heavy. It actually refers him to pick basically for the fact the gammon bomb What's an adjustable grenade basically put down as many plastic explosives depending on what you want to deal with infantry and armor. That's kind of how like you got sort of light and heavy, but in reality it was just a gun bomb and you just adjust it depending on what you need to deal with. It was also I think primarily a weapon for commandos. So, little fun fact there. I see Mark Fumering about this now with 18 kills. Make us hosting away to the Fultz Grenadiers. Has he authorized it? Yes, he has. In fact, he was going to go for a Panzer IV. He could also just decide to go for the bigger stuff and go for a Panther, the Panzer Kampfwagen V. Snob there drops one Sturm Pionier. Coming out on the Sappers. Hold up here with Commanders. Everything else He's doing a bit of healing there as well. Thumbs up. Two Inca Una. Biggest there being assaulted from South Side with Banhan Kanada once more flushed out. Lots of mines though. Sturm Pioneer's routed. Well, he can go for the Panther for now, but Jimmy is not doing that. Actually, I got a flank of the Fox and pretty much behind the AC Panther passing it. Not too shabby. There you go. Officer moving in with section. Interesting enough, the command's not there. And there we go. We got the Officer Charge. And there he goes straight into the mine here, killing several Fox Gunners, forcing him to retreat there from Jimmy, who might be just trying to bait them. Goes for the Panther for. Not a bad pick either, particularly all the infantry, particularly the expansion infantry. The Panther is going to be a nice pick there. Soon Inkuno can go for the crumble tank here. Follows the route here by the officer. Commanders bring up the right flank here for Inka Una. Back here to feeling forcing healing there for Jimmy. And we got the MU fit on the left flank doing uh, very little there. Not a big fan of that one, I'll admit. Feel like he should be doing a bit more actively with that one to support his frontline troops. Commander on the eastern side. Crumble almost down there or crumble on the way. Flank Una. Selling forcing. Fixing up the AC Mark III. Nothing further on the base except, of course, that Cromwell. Better this is being floated. No weapon racks or grenades, in particular, the commanders could also benefit from adding some Bren guns since they can't fire them on their move. Plus, they fire them more accurately, so they just perform better with them overall. Stone Pass about to run into the Commanders. That's going to be full retreat here. Panther Force shoots. Great hit there. Good deal of the Commander Squad there. Almost taken out. Snap opening up here. we got 21 kills. Fox with under heavy fire here from the Vickers. Panther on the right flank. Putting more pressure there on Inconus right flank. There, which clearly wasn't prepared for such an audacious move here by Jimmy. Panther Force shoots. Misses. I'm cutting off an AC. Doing heavy damage. Oh, might have got a bit too bold here. Almost lost it, but there you go. Akenna from up. Trying to take out the glider as well. Need to be careful. Oh, really bold. He's basically trying to take out the Panther 4 now. He's willing to sac sacrifice the AC there. Also, he's got the Cromwell out, so that's going to make... Oh, he lost it. But again, there's a good chance I could just finish off the Panther 4, which is going to be a horrendous blow there to Jimmy and the German army. He's trying to take out the Panther 4 here. Well, Akenna from right there. Go. Good maneuver there. Realizing the Panther 4, of course, has to go through his stuff. Just charging directly at it. He moves to where it's expected to move on ahead of time. And has a better chance of wiping it out. They're punishing Jimmy there. Oh, no mines there. No other coverage there. Shot bounced. Threat to the Panther 4. Still has a chance there. Goes popping heat. Runs increased damage. Penetration. Threat here in Kuna's crumble there. And try and compel a retreat. We've got the 6 Panther gun ready now as well. And there you go. Panther 4 down. Was a close one there for Inkuna. But in the end he did finish off Jimmy's Panther 4. Leaving Panther Jimmy there now. One Panther short. Well, Sullivan so control a good deal of the map here. So, thumbs up there, Tinkuna. That was a close one, though. Troops in forcing. 
two to three because right resource. I kind of feel like you should try and move to the fuel point here at this point. Inkun is focused so much in the sense that he's, I think, to really try and threaten him. He does. I mean, he could take the Biagi, then it's forcing him, his opponent to like move out of his comfort zone, which I think would still be a good move. In which case, using the two to three as bait for that could actually pay off. In particular, let's say mines up here and there as well. He could actually make it pay off from quite nicely now the AC is gone. So I think you should do that to be honest because I mean with this he gets six extra fuel per minute. If you move he gets seven extra or three extra fuel per minute, but if you move he gets seven extra fuel per minute. That'd be pretty big I think there for Jimmy versus Inca Una. So I think that'd be a great move there. Moving up, he got the sniper there. Exposed a bit too much for Inca Una, but he does manage to salvage the uh, sniper there from the situation of what him getting executed by the Germans for crimes against the German state and being a sniper. Primarily being a sniper, really. On average, most snipers, if caught by then, would usually find themselves just shot on the spot. Like, there's the whole Geneva Convention and, you know, taking prisoners and all that, but usually snipers and flamethrower operators were usually exempt by that by the common soldiers that really hated the bastards. So they just, you know, politely pull them aside and then just shoot them on the spot. So, a little fun fact there, I think was very much common in either army. Or at least if they suspected them of a sniper, that's of course another thing. Pantafon number 2 for Jimmy. Sniper there gets virtually 3, 26 kills. And a sniper there, that's going to be a definite problem there for Jimmy in the longer run. He could of course have tried for the Panther to improve his chances of his Inkuna's arm, but he's thinking to the Panther force still worried about enemy infantry, which I mean again makes sense. Got the command to see the false gun he is. We got mines of plenty, of course this time around realized this is actually a bit of a weak spot, which again a proper assault there could actually be quite exposed, so he's mining up, so thumbs up the Tinkuna. Fox is falling back. Still would be nice to see some grenades or brand guns up for him. Stim Puny are backed up the folks from moving Hitler kid for hanging back. And there goes second Panzer 4 Model G out there for Jimmy. Push on the center here. Of course, Vic is still in the exact same position. More mines there. Lots of mines. There you go. Officer charging with the officer and the sappers. Stim Pines there, right about the Stim. Oh, Vix is right about the Sturm Pines, but the Sturm Pines is about to be right here, but the command on the opposite side there. You go light gun bomb off on the Fulcrum of these. Very nice throw there. Big explosion, almost takes out the entire Fulcrum of the squad, forcing them to treat the op there easily. And the West Panther, we got the kids in mine or something. There was a stun shot there. He might have a chance taking out the sniper though. And he's clearly going to go for it. We got the Panther Commander over there for the Panther for as well. Almost here. Close one, close one. So far, the machine guns are doing more work than actually killing the sniper. He's weighing the options there briefly, but continues with there. Go guard the sniper fine, but now he's re exposed to the Cromwell. The old scouts moving up, hitting a mine. Six pound gun moving up as well there. Risk here losing the Panther Fort to the British, but there you go. Shot bounces. Panther Fort shoots. Enter tank and does not bounce. And there you go. Fort's going here for the six pound gun there. We got rapid maneuvers allowing it to move faster, but also just set up and rotate faster. There's actually a pretty handy ability overall. Very well looked by the average British player, so thumbs up to Inkuna for actually using it. But there you go, charging into the Panther 4, fires off the heat round. Technically incorrectly applied here in the game, since heat rounds or heat shells were typically used for guns with lower velocities. But some of the Panther 4 with that kind of gun, a heat shell really wouldn't have made an improvement. It'd be more for like Panther 4 early mods with a lower velocity gun that actually benefited a lot from it. So, little fun fact there. Another commander squad there for Ancona. I mean, he did have rounds that like, had better penetration. That means something like no, the Panzer gun out of Fiatsik, which is, again, rare. So, a little fun fact there. But they actually had less explosive in the fact that he might have just been pure steel or something like that. So, they actually did less damage in this sense. And it's folks that I'm going to up in the section. Let's go for the center victory point. I can, of course, just trying to remove their cover as well. Commanders are hiding out. Oh, but they're ordered to hold fire. So, folks actually get away safely from that one. Lucky there for Jimmy. Six pound gun and another section there for Inca Una. Nothing further going in the space. Oh, we got hammer tactics as well there. So he's going to go for the Comet. Inca Una, one of the few players who really likes the Comet tank and uses it consistently, so thumbs up there. Plus, of course, it gives him access to the regular Gammon Bomb. Oh, there we go. Mine goes off. Several mines, in fact. Really good money there by Inkuna. They just sent him in there bleeding out to Jimmy there. 
Looking to finish off that Glada, which will next us a fort retreat point. Well, no one's going to be treating to that one soon enough. And there you go, Glider finished off. And the Glider's entirely shattered now. Probably good to go. Fox is holding the line. He could go for another Panther Force soon. Of course, he might plan to go for the Storm Tiger here. It could be setting up for a Panther. Back hitch was reinforcing. He could, in theory, also be trying to stay up for a King Tiger, though I'm not entirely sure I'd be a big fan of that. There you go, trial on the way today. There's a King Tiger move, I believe, here from Jimmy. The Koenig Tiger. Bit more risky since he's only got one tank in the field, meaning his opponent's going to have a better chance of just building up a larger armored force and then destroying Jimmy before you can then get out the King Tiger. That's always the thing you have to keep in mind if you're going for like a big tank with just one medium tank in the field, like. Unless you can ensure your opponent doesn't get more than one tank at any time, but just constantly destroying the tanks, you risk quickly getting outnumbered, in which case you might have a harder time than utilizing said big tank you're planning on getting. So that's always a risk you have to keep in mind there. And I'm not entirely sure if Jimmy has considered that one. Oh, wait. Comfortable the hardcore tier going up there for Jimmy and the German Army, the 107th Panzer Brigade. MG 54, of course, can't see. Oh, there you go. Actually, not command to the truth back. And there you go. Command to sneak up. They're popping off a light gun bomb and. Pop goes the weasel in a most explosive and grisly manner. But there goes straight into the scrap punch, causing them to grab the MG4 and turn against Jimmy. And he's destroying it pretty much. Just then he's in Kuna to deny it to Jimmy. Good move there. Chrome moving up. We got a Tillified Cold in here as well. Thing to make it harder for the opponent to move. On this case, to deny the building to him. Fire is flanking, we got Fulton pushing back the section there. Very good as well. A kind of cribbing up there for Jamie. Back here, 2 to 1 slowing about. Or 2 to 3, I mean. Strafing support. Active, but not used yet. Mine's being laid down there by Jimmy. Thumbs up. And hitting the Eastern Fuel Point again. It's going to take some time, of course, to get the King Tiger out. I would say with the current amount of map, if you get these in a few points, it's going to be a lot faster than Inca I imagine would like. But he can actually go for the Comet now, putting more pressure on Jimmy now. Of course, he could be setting up for the Crocodile, which isn't too far off on, and certainly not to put more pressure on Jimmy now. Certainly sooner than the King Tiger, but obviously it would be less effective as the King Tiger due to slight less penetration. But, you know, we'll never see either way. Crocodile, Comet, you know, both are good. I personally recommend the comment, but you know, going crocodile, it's also pretty good here. Crocodile is also pretty good here. I mean, make no mistake, it's not like the crocodile hill is a bad choice. Turn up when you're punishing up for the King Tiger. There you go, charging head here with Officer Charge, like Gun Bomb Off. Officer, of course, just scoffs it off, even it's right next to it. And folks could walk there, could have blew quite blurred as Jimmy. Going for Orbison, I'd make good to make up for that bit of slack. Orbison Light Machine is going put some pressure on the commanders and the officer. Chroming Westwood's going for another Fusco Squad. Pantherful moving in. Shot fired and missed. The Kemel to wipe down. Ooh, not good there for Jimmy. Sank really saw some heavy losses. In Kuna, moments away there from the Crocodile Tank. Back here, Fulcus reinforcing. Others being back to reinforce as well and heal. And destroying the Kedden Mather. Making things further awkward here for Jimmy once the Crocodile hits. And there you go. Crocodile out here. Not fully accurately shown off here since technically they actually had a little trailer with fuel trailing behind. In fact, a lot of flame for a tank did, though obviously trying to get that to work in the game would be pretty difficult. If they could get it to work, I'm sure they also do toad anti tank guns. Which would be pretty cool, actually, if they could have done that. But yeah. Panther falling back. So just a little note there about the crocodile. Of course, all still has strafing support available. Jim is actually not too far off from the King Tang and also got the upside now that the elite infantry there for the upper commander vest for the LMG 34. Looks like it's getting ready for a push here. It's crocodile of course revealed now to in Jimmy. Man goes over on the west to hit the western fuel point. 
Got the overwhelming West Virginia hosting up in the Sappers with the LMG 34. Have a taste of sis, you place your shrine. Bottom at the eastern side. Panda 4 with 3 kills. Roughly a minute, a bit over that for the King Tiger here for Jimmy. He's got the fuel of the the manpower now. Lots of nations there for Kuna. He's remaining very uh, complacent about this. He should be figuring out his opponent is probably planning to hit him with the King Tiger over the head repeatedly. I mean, if he does allow two passes, there's actually a chance the King Tiger could work out for Jimmy, which is not really something you should want to happen, I guess, unless you're really into King Tigers, to the point you actually allow them just to roll over you. Pulse from going up there on the eastern side. Quiet back in the base of Inca Una. A crocodile with emergency wall speed. I don't actually think I've seen that, but it sounds terrifying, to be honest. Like, just imagine a flame for a tank at max speed coming at you. <laughs> That's the stuff of nightmares. Alongside the Brits and Company is one. <laughs> the real nightmares. Fortunately, Inkuna seems, doesn't seem to have connected those two dots. Or perhaps he's afraid he might actually end up on a war criminals list despite winning the war. Like that's one Jimmy the coach might even not be able to look like just You what? Well I, I I thought it'd be fun. You put that on that, oh you monster. I mean the Germans did some pretty terrible things, but that good lord, you make me sick. You make me want to vomit, you monster. Maybe something like that. Anyways, Crocodile going eastwards, Cro King Tiger heading westwards. Mine goes off. They're damaging in the crocodile. That is not a great start. That's the crocodile's adventures in the battlefield. King Tiger being westward. So it looks like it's not going to exploit this mistake here by Inkuna. It was this misstep, I'd say. King Tiger moving westward. Sap is under fire from the Koenig. He gets 8 hit mode a gun. Crumble rushing east was there through the main roads. Transforming Westwards, catching on the Crocodile. Now the... All of a sudden it seems like the King's up here. I'm going to the centre here. And we got Artillery called in here on the Vickers and the Crocodile. Nice work there, I think, by Jimmy. Artillery fails there. Raiding down, almost taking out the Vickers machine gun crew. Put on the right flank, getting hammered at the Crocodile. 75 on the gun. Pan King Tiger moving up. Panther moving in. Interesting to note, he's actually at, not out of the Panther command of the King Tiger. You'd figure he'd do that, but... Oh, well. And just hanging there, ready. Panther 4 push back. We got 317 versus 334. Bit more quiet here back here. Troops in force in the FN Kuna. Need to fix up that crocodile rapidly. Fulton about to be here by the commander and the officer. Commander's interesting enough, he's not quite hit the ace level yet, but there he goes on the way there. Officer charge, right past the grenade, catching Jimmy off guard there. There go, full assault here. German infantry routed with ease there by Inkuna's brave chaps. Six pounder gun pierced in the front of the king, target said, one else good hit there through. Half health there. Pantor from the eastern side. Crocodile almost good to go here for Inkuna once more. Engine is still a bit off there. Need to be fed some more tea. Chrome then moving up behind the Panzer IV here, backed up by the 6 pounder gun, could destroy here Jimmy's Panzer IV, his Panzer gun flying fear, which is just game by 2-2. Nice flank there by Inkona, exposed in there, Jimmy's armoured floor. But there you go, quick combat blitz, it allows the Panzer IV to get away, and of course allows to shoot faster while it's getting away there. 6 pounder gun assault here from the full scan of the ground, decent fuel point here. Crocodile good to go once more here for Inkona. Ooh, trying to sound cheap, that's risk getting wiped instead by the flame front and all that. Yeah, oh, full wipe! And right now, there's actually an issue for Jimmy. He's starting to run out of infantry here. And that did not help him at all. Ouch. Stukas of here for Jimmy. Mm, could work, but honestly, I feel like the Stukas of fails most of the time and just flops. So I'm not sure that's a great move there by Jimmy when he probably could just go for another Panzer Thor. Or a Yak Pan, so I think a Yak Pan would be a lot more useful as the Crocodile, for example. 
And I argue the crocodile would probably represent one of the bigger threats right now to Jimmy. And there you go. Orbs on there being scorched, burned by Churchill's dragon. King Tiger moving out there. The Koenig's Tiger's on the move. Shoots and hits some shrubberies instead. Pants oh, he cancels the Super Sports for Panzer 4. Definitely better. I think the Arc Panzer still might be a good choice as well. Oh, wait. Bring up his shot. Bounce also burning into as well there. Scorching through any support for the King Tiger. There you go. Good hit. He's going to, I think, try and go for a flank here on the King Tiger with a Cromwell. A Crocodile. A Cromwell. A Cromwell. Oh, he actually has emergency wall speed now. Possibly activated on it. We'll see if he actually uses it. Panzer moving up the flank here. Shot bounces. Panther 4 there being flanked. King Tiger moving ahead here. Straight into the line of fire the anti tank gun. Panther 4 there. Isolate guard heat runs up. Penetrating hit in the rear of the Panther 4. King Tiger moving straight to the anti tank gun. Down to less than half health. Panther 4 they're trying to escape. It's oh main gun out on the King Tiger. He's actually pretty fast. That's actually some pretty bad luck there. King Tiger out. Kaput. Air support called in over this. I think Jimmy is pretty much just yeah, down the toilet. Down gets a single panther for no matter of moments, the fortunes of war went against him. He even used the Merge War Speed. That's an actual war crumb there. Probably not. But there you go, GG. Game over. A loss for Jimmy, a victory for Inkaluna and the British Army. A brutal one versus one here on Crossroads. Heavy fun in him in the end. Inkaluna and a steady hand saw the war won here by him. Feel like Jimmy again could have had this one on the fuel point. Assist him a bit more with that. I feel like you should try for sort of launching bigger flanks than Inkahuna, run these sort of smaller incremental pushes, which really just favoured Inkahuna's art of war there. So I hope you enjoyed this match, you have learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it, tell a friend, tell a family, but don't tell enemies. This is Imperial Engine. Cheers. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again for another episode. Bye.